Okay, so this is the first time that this prototype will be plugged in for real, 100%. I'm using my, I'm going to go through this power supply instead of just the input here because I want to regulate the amperage going, the current going through here because this could get scary. Uh, I'm not actually sure if it's going to work. So I'm going to set first of all the voltage. I'm going to bring this down to 12 volts which is roughly what we have on the input. So it's basically going to be a pass-through. It's 12.3 actually. Okay, so I'm going to set that and I'm going to put a current limit of, you know, we shouldn't be pulling any current here. So I'm actually going to put it at 100 milliamps because I do not trust it. Okay. Going to need a screwdriver. This is the one thing I don't like about um, these terminal blocks is that you do need a, a tool to, to use it but in the end I think it'll be okay especially since you can go from the terminal block to a distribution block and in the final design it'll be much better so here brown is negative so I'm gonna slap that on there and turn this in You can put a lot of force with these terminals too, so you got to be careful not to uh, bend everything. Okay, so that's done. Uh, in my multimeter, I've got these custom leads I've made. So we're going to try the 12 volt first. Actually, I don't even need really to shove these in there. Uh, I will when I check these. So I'm going to go okay here. Okay, so. 12.331 on the output, no current. That's good. So I'm going to set this to DC volts. Okay, I'm going to prop it up so you can see. Kind of like that. There we go. Okay, so there should be voltage here. So I'm just going to pop these onto the screws. You should see some voltage. Come on. 12.28 okay so we're not really dropping anything there now these two should not have any current or any voltage I should say well current either but any voltage because this switch is shut nothing perfect alright so now I'm gonna flip this switch this should be the 12 volt switch okay and let's see still not drawing any current you can see there so I'm going to just check to see if we get anything. 12.29, so this is actually passing through. So this actually works, perfect. Now, this guy here should control this one. I'm gonna hook up my, I should get a smaller screwdriver. Hold on a second. Does this guy work? Let's see, yeah. I'm going to open them all up. Okay, so I'm going to put the positive in the positive and the negative in the negative. And it shows us zero volts, so this switch is working. Now, when I flip this switch we're gonna see something here and I don't know what it is because I have not messed with this potentiometer but if it shows us something we know the switching works so let's see please no fire okay no fire so we have 20 milliamps and it's set to 12 volts so I'm gonna roll that down a bit I hear coil wine like crazy seems to be going down don't really have the proper screwdriver for this. Oh, one volt. What's going on here? Getting 1.34 that's odd. I might need a load on here to adjust it. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Oh. 10, 9, 8. Okay, so I can probably set that to 9 volts. Didn't turn it enough in the correct direction. There we go. 9 volt output. And then I'm going to flip this switch off. 0 volts. Okay, we're getting just a couple of millivolts there. Back on. 9 volts. Boom. That one works. Perfect. So let's remove this. And mind you, don't forget, this is for very, very low current. You wouldn't use this, this is not a, like, to, to power something major. This is to power my, you know, my oscilloscope, my uh, device, my uh, component checker. Okay, zero volts, so the switch is wired in correctly. Turn it on, and we're getting nothing. So, uh, one, two, three, yeah, this should be the third one. So let's see, this is either incorrectly wired, pot is turned wrong, or something else. Okay, not working, not a problem. I'm going to flip that back closed. I'm just going to try the last one. Because then we at least know we're working on something. Okay, this will be the three volt one. Again, you see nothing there. Flip that on. You see nothing there again. Interesting. I flip this. Okay. So we've got a problem with two of them. So first things first. Let's do a visual. So I'm going to turn the off the power. So these two, these two, something's wrong. So power is coming in here. This is the switch middle terminal. There's a big blob of solder. That to positive, negative goes across like this. Back to here. Okay, so it should work. So let's do a little bit of diagnostics here. So let's start with this guy. I'm going to turn that on. OK, 1 milliamp drawn. Let's see if we have 12 volts at the input. Yeah, 12 volts on the input. What do we have on the output? looks like nothing on the output I don't exactly have my probing my, my probes here interesting so we have input but no output oh why is that 5? no oh, 12, ok 12 volts and over here check right on this capacitor here nothing we have input but no output wonder if this device is blown because we are getting the 12 volts for sure yeah 12 volts in 100% sure no output whatsoever must mean that the chip's not getting powered. One point seven volts. Weird. So I'm not sure why this isn't working. Mind you, it's been in my junk bin for quite a while. That's interesting though. So that one is not working. Still? Yeah, still. And now it should have no voltage here because the switch is off. Yeah. Like a little bit of leakage. 
interesting. So this one's not working. Let's let's check this one now. So this is on. Do we have voltage across this cap? No, no voltage there. Okay, so something's wrong. That switch is probably not actually not actually making contact there. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, for the other one, oh, it's uh, yeah, it's this guy. For this one, is it possible that the negative is not connected? No, that is connected. Interesting. So let me just see if I can see if it's just a solder bridge problem here. Um, it was this guy. That does look like a problematic soldering job. I did do it after all, so. Okay, let's check. Let's see if output number three is on now. It is. Great. So that was easy. But the other one looks like I have a dead module. So now I can set the voltage on this. This this should be the five volt. So I'm going to spin this one down. Six. Oh, my multimeter is switching uh, range here. See what I mean? They're adjustable, but they're not ideal. Okay, so there we go. We got five volts there, so that's good. We turn this off, nothing. So, so far, 12, nine, and five work. The uh, three, three volt is not working, but at least now I can use this as is. So I think this is where this project is going to end for now. Um, I believe this one's dead because we are getting voltage in and directly here we do not get voltage out. So I believe this board is dead. Maybe I'll have a closer look on that in another video. But for now this will serve my purpose just fine. This also means this concept is doable. So that means I can start designing a more permanent way to fix everything together. And maybe a little um, enclosure a little bit of 3D printing, a little bit of label making, and I think we're going to have ourselves a really good product here. But once again, thanks for watching.